physics fans, Mr. G here today, and we're going to talk about really the first major topic in dealing with kinematics uh, in terms of physics, and this is this idea of uniform motion. And to start off with uniform motion, we're going to talk about the difference between speed and velocity. A lot of people use these words interchangeably as if they're the same. Uh, in physics terms, that is just not so. And let's find out what this is all about. So, first thing we're going to say is speed uh, is the distance traveled in a given time. For those of you that watch the video on vector addition and subtraction, you'll notice that when we talk about distance, it's a scalar quantity, uh, and it's just uh, the magnitude between two points, and that's exactly the same here. So if distance is a scalar, time is also a scalar, uh, which gives us speed as a scalar as well. And there's an equation for that. And we deal with this V. Now, I want to point out a, a couple major things. There is no arrow above the V, and it is not in bold type. Therefore, those, those are two signals that it's a vector. In this case, it's not. So the average speed is equal to your distance divided by the time traveled. Velocity, on the other hand, is the change of position over time. So you remember when we were talking about vectors, this idea of displacement came up where we dealt with some sort of origin point and we figured out what the resultant displacement was from that point. And that's a similar idea of what we're going to do with velocity. Uh, velocity, like displacement, is a vector, but you'll see it written somewhat like this. So I'm going to put the arrow over top so that you realize that velocity is a vector, but you're going to see it as the change in distance over change in time. Notice that that's different from just distance over time. Another way to write it, of course, is very similar to the other equation, except velocity is equal to d with an arrow above it. That's what we mean by displacement over time. Now, the delta is a fancy Greek letter meaning change in or final minus initial. So when we look at something like delta d, that's actually equal to distance final minus distance initial and that's really what we're looking for okay so let's go ahead and use these equations in a couple different questions first question is a student travels 11 meters north and then turns around and travels 25 meters south if the total time traveled is 12 seconds find the student's average speed so remember speed is just v equals d over t and what is our distance in this case well that's just the addition of the two values, so 11 meters plus 25 meters, and that's going to be divided by the time, which in our case is 12 seconds, and you're going to get a value of 3 meters per second. You might remember from our discussion on units that we should have a speed or velocity in terms of meters per second. Uh, if we look at our second A, or what we like to call B, uh, the student's average velocity, now we get into something different. Because remember, our velocity is equal to displacement over time. Now, how do we find our displacement? Well, the answer comes from using our vector diagram. So, we have our origin point. We traveled 11 meters to the north. And then we turned around and traveled 25 meters south. Notice again, all I'm dealing with here is relative sizes. And we are looking for the resultant vector. Well, we see that we traveled more south than north, which means we are looking for this vector right there. And upon quick observation, we should know that's 14 meters and it's definitely pointing south. So if we put that in, our displacement is 14 meters divided by 12 seconds, we should get an answer of 1.2 meters per second. Now, if we want to consider this as up being positive and down being negative, which we're going to do a lot in physics. What's going to change is instead of this just being a positive and I'm dealing with the sign built into the arrow, I would put a negative sign right there. Well, how is that going to change our answer is instead of it being positive 14, it's actually going to be negative 14, which means we would have a negative sign out in front. Well, what is that telling us? That's telling us our direction for us. So instead of me having to write down that it's 1.2 meters per second south, if you have established what up is and what down is, then the sign of your actual solution is going to tell you which way it's pointing. So in my case, I left everything positive. Uh, but in another sense, if you put some negative signs on stuff, that's going to mean uh, the direction that's traveling. So something to consider. 
So let's look at three more questions and then I'll set you free. How long does it take for a car traveling 45 kilometers an hour to reach 100 meters? Well, first thing we have to do, you'll notice we're in kilometers per hour. We need to change it into meters per second. Uh, if you do it the brute force way, it's 45 kilometers per hour times, well, there's 1,000 meters in one kilometer times in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Remember, there's a shortcut to this. You could just divide by 3.6. But either way you go, you should end up at 12.5 meters per second. All right, cool. Now we need to find out what the time is. Well, what are we going to do? In this case, let's use speed equals distance over time. Now what we do is we solve this equation for t. And you'd better be able to do this very easily to find that t is equal to your distance divided by your speed or your velocity. Now we can plug in the values. We know that our distance is 100 meters. We know that our velocity or our speed is 12.5 meters per second to give us a total time of eight seconds. So again, it doesn't matter which term you use in this case because we'll just call where the car started from as our origin point. So displacement and our distance will be the same in this case. For number two, how far does the skateboarder travel in 22 seconds if his average velocity is 12 meters per second? Well, again, we can use these equations interchangeably. We're looking for d, so that means d is equal to our speed times our time, or our velocity times our time. Let's plug in our values, 12 meters per second times 22 seconds, and what you should get is 264 meters. Now, if you're a stickler about um, sig figs, really this should be 260 meters. For the last one, a shopping cart moves from a point three meters west of a flagpole. Aha, so we're talking about orientation. So let's put a flagpole right here. There we go, that's the ugliest flag I've ever seen. And we're starting from a point um, three meters to the west. So there we go, uh, to a point 18 meters east. So here's our 18 meters now, that way. In 2.5 seconds, find the average velocity. Okay, well, our velocity is our change in distance over time, which if you recall is our final distance minus our initial distance divided by time. Now, we're dealing with everything based upon it like a number line. So if we call our flagpole zero, our initial or our final distance is 18 meters to the right, and our initial is negative three meters. Why is it negative three? Because we're to the left of our origin. Think of it like a number line. And we're going to divide that by our time, which in this case is 2.5 seconds, and you're going to end up with an answer of 8.4 meters per second. Now, is that the final solution? No. Why? Because it's a vector. Right, We've dealt with the position, which means it's not 8.4 meters per second, it's 8.4 meters per second east. The other way you could do it is establish early on. You could say positive means east, negative means west, and then you've at least established the fact that there's a direction.